Welcome to this episode of the AEC Engineering and Technology Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping engineering professionals find technology that fits their needs. In this episode, I'll be speaking with David, co-founder of Design Master Software, a renowned developer of electrical engineering software. In this episode, we'll explore the impact of building information modeling, also known as BIM, on electrical engineering. David will discuss the current state of BIM implementation for electrical engineers and highlight its remarkable benefits. With that, let's jump into today's episode. David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure pleasure to, to have you on today. Um, would you be able to just start off by telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so um, I write electrical software for engineers that runs on top of Revit. I got started in this actually in the mid-90s, which is, if you'll remember, before Revit existed. Uh, I was writing it for my dad's electrical engineering firm. So that's how I got into this whole space. And uh, we wrote software. He, you know, back at the time, it was AutoCAD and Excel. And they they wanted software to kind of integrate some of that stuff. So we were writing for AutoCAD. And we released software in 2002 that ran on top of AutoCAD. Um, and then in 2013, started doing stuff for Revit. So we have electrical software for electrical engineers. And I mean, it sounds like you you guys have been around the block a little bit and kind of seen how um, design software for for engineers has changed and and that kind of um, aspect. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, we've seen the progression from you know before BIM existed to BIM starting to come on the scene, and then Revit showing up, and and the twenty years of development that Revit's had. So I, I've watched the whole progression of the industry from the CAD space to BIM and how that's that's changed. And as we know, right, and you you kind of alluded to this, about 10 years ago is when you guys got started on it, but BIM's become pretty popular in the AE space, right? So we were talking earlier about how it's a great product out of the box for architects, um, maybe not so much for engineers, but could you talk specifically about the state of BIM today for electrical engineers? So like you were saying, BIM out of the box is really good for architects. And that's where it all started. That's the, where the focus was. Uh, but electrical engineers didn't get a whole lot of attention. So the stuff that, that you have in Revit, it's just enough to make an architect think it could work for electrical engineering, but it doesn't actually meet the needs of what an electrical engineer needs. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity in terms of BIM for what electric, electrical engineers could do, but it hasn't been addressed by the major players. So that's what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to come in and fill in these gaps where Revit isn't handling what electrical engineers uh, want out of the software and trying to provide what BIM could be for an electrical engineer if it's actually implemented properly. And could you speak to specifically some of those challenges that electrical engineers are facing while using BIM today? So the biggest challenge is that BIM comes in and it says, hey, we're going to care about this 3D model and, and the layout of all your stuff in 3D. And if your panel has a matte or a glossy finish and the electrical engineer doesn't care about any of that stuff. Uh, they don't care about their 3D model hardly at all. They, they need to do a little bit of coordination, but they're thinking about what they have called a single line diagram where you lay out your panels in a very diagrammatic fashion. It's not 3D modeling at all, but it's I have a panel, it's connected to some transformers and I've got other panels feeding that. Uh, and then you have the calculation model based upon that where you are sizing wires and you're calculating voltage drop and doing arc flash, all the stuff that electrical engineers have to do. And none of that's being handled by the 3D model. So what they really need from BIM is they need the model that you have in Revit because some of that stuff is important. You need to lay out your, your devices and, and your floor plans, but then you also need to link it to the single line and you need to link it to the calculation so that you have a model that's doing all of those things rather than these three separate models in these three separate spaces. And and from our conversation earlier, right, that's not just an electrical engineering problem, right? It's engineering disciplines across the board that are using BIM where you got to use BIM for, right, for the sake of your, your prime consultant, typically the architect and construction documents. But it sounds like engineers are going to other places to get those things done but you guys are offering an all-in-one solution, it sounds like. Yeah, so this is not unique to electrical engineers. That's just where we're obviously quite focused. 
Uh, it's, it's kind of a common problem with engineering. And yeah, what we're trying to do is provide a BIM solution in Revit that actually takes all those pieces together, puts them all in Revit so that what you kind of think you could do in Revit as an electrical engineer actually ends up happening for you because you have this promise that the salesman comes to and, and tells you about, and you have these ideas about what could happen and then you actually try and implement it in Revit and, and it all falls apart. Uh, and our software comes in and does all those things that in your mind you thought it should be able to do. We actually implement those for you in Revit. So for anyone in the audience who's listening and who's kind of struggled with this, this classic um, BIM versus engineer problem, right? Maybe there's a market for um, something similar to, to what um, he's done here just outside of the, the electrical discipline. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, the use of the model for like error detection, right? So we know that BIM can help reduce errors during the design process, but for electrical engineers specifically, like what does that process look like and how does it affect project outcomes? Yeah, so there's always huge places where you can have all sorts of errors when you're doing your design. Uh, and for electrical engineers, it's largely the, the uh, disconnect between those three models. You've got a panel and just the simplest example is you have a panel and it has a name. And so you have that name in Revit and then you also have that name listed on your single line diagram and you also have that panel name in your calculation model. And so you go and you change a panel name in one and you forget to change it in the other two. And then you get a change order back because the contractor is confused and he doesn't know which panel this refers to. Uh, so you bring in software that integrates those three, you change a panel name in one place and it updates it in the other. So that's where properly implemented BIM that's taking those three models, integrating them together and you make a change in one and it shows up in the other. You know, the panel name is the simplest example, but if you're in your calculation model and you're upsizing a wire for voltage drop, you need to have that reflected in those other two models as well. So anytime you make a change, you're not having to chase that change around to all those three different places and either spending a bunch of time doing QA and QC, or you don't spend the time and then you have change orders. Uh, neither of those are good situations. So our software integrates that and, and prevents those errors from happening. And as you mentioned, it's just properly integrated and managed BIM from the start of a project to just avoid what ultimately it sounds like are sometimes in some cases relatively simple, in other cases maybe not um, issues that if just dealt with at the start um, really don't happen as often down the down the line. It sounds like, yeah, and it's not anything complicated. It's just keeping track of all your stuff in all your different places. It's you know. It used to be, well, they would make sure that they only put the panel name in one spot. And so the panel name wasn't labeled anywhere else so that they could they would only have to remember to change it in one place. And that works, but then you're you're limiting your documentation because you're like, I only want to put this label in one spot, not because that's the best way to communicate, but that prevents errors. So if we say, okay, I can put this label in different places and be confident that it's going to update you can actually have better documentation from your BIM model than you would otherwise, because you can be confident that all of those places are going to be updated and you can actually get the information where it belongs. And we know that no matter, right, whether it's, you know, reducing the errors up front, better documentation, or having to backtrack and correct, like, as you mentioned, through maybe an RFI um, during, during the construction process, right? It's all about time, right? And it sounds like, implementation of BIM for electrical engineers can save time both during design and construction. You've alluded to a couple of examples so far, but what else What else do you think can be done to, to help facilitate that? So there definitely is time savings with BIM. Uh, it You do end up spending a little bit more time up front laying things out so that on the back end, when you make your changes, uh, they are faster. So there's a little bit of a, a trade-off there when you're doing BIM. You can't just copy a one line from the last project and say, hey, this is my one line, because you actually need to model it out properly and make sure that, that it's integrated and linked. Uh, but doing that work up front does mean that on the back end, when you're making changes, you're saving time. So there is a little bit of a trade-off. But overall, over the course of the project, you will save time spending the time up front properly modeling it in BIM so that the changes at the end uh, are, are, are easier to ma manage. And that's yeah. when the project gets complicated at the end when you've got more stuff going on. And again, that's just another recurring theme, right? It's like, we're used to spending, you know, X amount of time up front to deliver a project, right? But then there's some incremental, it 
whatever the percentage of, of X might be, right? But man, does it pay dividends down the line? And I'm sure you've seen this implemented time and time again with your clients. Yeah. The the original like genesis of this when I was doing it with my dad is that they would they knew that all the work they would do at the beginning wasn't going to be usable at the end because things were going to change. So they would actually, rather than doing any work up front, they would just do the bare minimum to get through the first couple sets. And then when the arc, once the architect finally finishes building, they'd l- work like nights and weekends for two or three days to do a full electrical design, like months of work over, over a course of days, because they knew that, that nothing was going to change on them because the architect doesn't have any time to change at that point. Uh, and so <laughs> that work, you know, that, that's not a great way to do your work. So the whole idea is that you, you take a bunch of that work, you put it up front, but in a way that it's not going to be this huge problem to change it at the end. And that's, again, that's not just common with electrical design because <laughs> right speaking from the structural side, I have seen that and experienced that firsthand. But, you know, what you're saying sounds great, right? Because if you can diligently implement like process, procedure and software up front, those changes down the line become less time consuming and, and critical because the software sounds like it's doing a lot of that tedious and mundane lifting for you. Yeah, it does depend on having the right software implemented, which, I mean, obviously we think our software is a good solution for that, but you need something that's doing it. That the end, It's not something that the engineer can necessarily build out on their own. They are dependent on uh, tooling companies like ours to develop the software to provide for them so they can get their projects done. Yeah, and and I think for perhaps, let's say, the average engineer, right, being able to... Uh right? Have the programming background and the team to produce something like you guys have just isn't realistic. So there's, it sounds like there's definitely a partnership between your clients kind of, and your team that, you know, you just guys just make it work based on an iterative process. Yeah. There's a lot of collaboration between us and our customers in terms of what they need, what we're building out next. Uh, You know, there are larger companies and they'll have a dev team of three or four people building this in-house. The benefit there obviously is that what they're developing is exactly what that company needs, but it's not something you can take out to other companies, even if they wanted to share it. We are trying to build something that's universal that can be used by engineers across companies uh, so that, again, they don't have to have that three or four person dev team. Because that's a pretty big investment. You have to be a big company to be able to afford that. This way we can bring our software. And if you're a one or two man shop, you can afford it and you can have software that's as good as what these other companies are putting together. Well said, and I say it all the time, right? It's, you know, talking talking to anyone in the software business, it's like, hey, if I could if I could build this myself, I would. But right, for, you know, 90 plus percent of, of engineering firms that are, you know, under, I don't know, let's say 20 people, right? Probably not realistic to have a three to four person dev team doing it in-house. Yeah, so that's where we come in. We we do that for them. And then we, we provide the software that the 10 years of development we've had, they get. And then they can actually start seeing these benefits of BIM that were promised 20 years ago. They can actually have it for their discipline uh, rather than just watching the architects get all the benefits. (laughs) And, and, you know, as you, as you touched on, right. So 2002, right. You guys were working in CAD about 10 years later in 2013, the BIM release, right. So there's a constant evolution of technology, right. And kind of one of the things that goes in hand with that is this increasing demand for sustainability. So how do you see BIM and electrical engineering kind of meeting those demands and where do you see software going over the next couple of years? So we're at the point where we're finally, you know, after 10 years of de- development, have software that we can say is really meeting what the electrical engineers need. And there's just so much more opportunity to expand that. So we need to have the industry continue to, to, to not change its platform. There, there's a time where they would change platforms from Softdesk to Autodesk Architectural and then the Revit. Um, we've stuck on Revit for 20 years. And so it's been long enough that we can build out these other tools. And so we can continue to iterate on those and, and develop those for the sub-disciplines because we have a stable platform that we're building on. Uh, so I think the most important thing in terms of innovation is to not change the underlying platform yet again and, and go off in, in some different direction, but to take what we have and continue to build on it. And so much of innovation is just iterative, right? Like, so you say like that base platform doesn't change in 
I guess, concept, right? But it allow, allows you guys to iterate and improve your product over time, even if it's not this, you know, big splash all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Just little incremental improvements. Now that we've got a base, we've got Revit that we're working on. We've got our software with our electrical work that we're doing. We can iterate on that and just see the incremental improvements, uh, you know, gear to year. It's not going to be a huge change that we can come out with because we've got the basic process in place, but we can do the little improvements uh, taking advantage of all the just opportunity that we do have to make things better. Which is also good for your customers, right? Because right, people were, were resistant to change by nature, right? So it's good to just have that consistent, you know, piece of software platform that you're familiar with. And, and speaking of your customers, could you speak to any like examples or case studies where electrical engineers have used your software and seen success? So for our customers, we very much are focused on the just the standard run of the mill mundane building the strip malls the banks the the hotels so we don't have like these flagship projects where it was this very complicated design because that's what not most people most people aren't doing that they're doing just standard buildings and those need to get designed and built so in in those cases our customers we have talked with them and and the reports we get back is that uh, they see their design time being cut in half by using a tool like ours Another cu a customer said that his time savings was cut by 65% in his projects. Um, a more specific example, like chasing down the mechanical revisions. One company said that used to take weeks to do, and now they can handle it in four hours by using the change management that our software uh, allows for them. So going from two, two weeks to four hours is a huge time savings. So that's, that's the kind of benefit that our customers are seeing, not on these fancy projects that I can name, but just the standard run-of-the-mill projects every day uh, that that we need to get built. They're super important, but they're they're not the the fancy stuff. And and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Because yeah. you know these the the projects that, like we said, right, whether it's 90, 90 or ninety five percent of these small to medium sized businesses, right, mm -hmm. one to twenty people or whatever the numbers are, right, that's their bread and butter, and that's what they specialize in. Um, and when you're enabling such a large percentage of the engineering community to basically optimize their workflows, save time, and ultimately deliver a better project for their clients. I mean, that sounds great because you're having such a kind of a, a widespread reach. Yeah, we're, we're trying to hit just the, the like you said, the, the, the standard one to 20 person firm who's doing the standard projects uh, and, and just needs to get their work done. Uh, so we're trying to help make that more efficient for them. And David, it's been it's been great having you on and kind of you know understanding a little bit more about what you guys are bringing to the table and how you're saving electrical engineers all this all this time. But if an electrical engineer came to you, a firm owner, let's say, and said, "Hey, really interested in using BIM and perhaps your software overlaid on it," right? Like what? What advice are you giving them to make sure that they're arriving at the decision that's best for them? At this point, I would say you probably need to be looking at Revit as the platform that you're working on, and you're going to need to spend some time learning how to use Revit. If you're not there yet, it is going to be something different from what you've been doing before. You're going to have to be okay with the fact that things are going to change. So come in with the idea that you're, you're using a new platform. And you're going to have to learn Revit, but you're going to have to learn Revit without a whole lot of resources because all the resources uh, are architectural focused. And so you get into like the electrical engineering and, and they they fall off pretty quick. So be prepared to, to do a lot of learning on your own. And then you want to get some sort of tool on top of Revit that is going to help you out. Uh, I would obviously recommend our software, but you need something beyond just Revit to really be effective and to be the, the most productive in BIM. And it sounds, it sounds nice too, because if they're partnering with a software vendor like you, right, I'm sure you guys can also help provide some guidance, even on just the basics of using BIM applied to electrical engineering, forgetting any other um, overlays and just out of the box software just to get them up to speed first. Yeah, we actually uh, just came out with a video on electrical design in Revit. Uh, just basic electrical design to help the companies that are not using Revit yet, because we need you using Revit before we can sell you our software. So it, it's a little self-serving, but uh, it lets people get that 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 training that they need. So we we try and provide that as a resource for the industry to help people get up to speed on BIM and Revit, so that then they can add our software on top of that. 
And let's say if our if our listeners just wanted to connect with you to find out more information, whether on some of the, the training you guys just do on out of the box Revit or your software, what's the best way for them to reach you? So the my company is Design Master Software. You can find us on the web at designmasterbit.biz, B-I-Z. Uh, so you can go there. You can download a free trial of our software. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel if you search for Design Master Software. So you can find uh, trainings on our software and on Revit there as well. Excellent. Well, David, thank you again so much for joining us. And we'll we'll look forward to catching up with you next time. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Take care now. Please remember, you can find the show notes for this episode at aectechpodcast.com. There, you will find a summary of key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering and technology endeavors. Thank you.